Reasons why I prefer Maspi to Marpi are number one, the slow expansion is actually a lot more comfortable and less painful for our patients. Number two, when we actually expand with a slow protocol, that is when we expand, we're actually seeing movement or opening of the suture. That's what we constitute as success. If we can't get the suture to open up or minimally move, we can't expand the palate. The other thing about Maspi is with lighter pressure, we actually see less bending and deformation of the cranial bones. When you're putting a lot of pressure about the palatal suture, it's also gonna put a lot of pressure between the maxilla and the zygoma. This is a temporal bone. All these bones are gonna undergo pressure. So we're gonna see less bending, straining, and other things. We're also gonna see fewer bad outcomes. Sometimes if you put a lot of heavy, fast pressure, that can increase the chances of actually opening up other sutures in the face. For example, you could open up this suture up here or over here. These are things that you don't wanna do. We get a lot of questions about how fast slow versus rapid palatal expansion really is. And it's really more about what the expansion effects are on the suture than it is how fast or how slow. We're not turning several times a day. We're normally turning like once every other day. We're paying attention to the amount of pressure as we expand. We don't want that pressure to build up to be a really high amount of pressure. The rate and the pressure, what we try to do is try to have it minimally open the suture, not to fracture it open and create measurable space between the right and left sides of the palate. So that's really what it's all about. You're still gonna get a diastema if you're doing slow palatal expansion, just like rapid palatal expansion, because if the growth is happening about the suture, eventually, since a palate is widening and it's happening about the midpoint, we're gonna see space open up between the front teeth.